Well, welcome back to Suburban Jessup. Uh, today we're going to uh, continue making elements for a project that we're working on. Uh, we've been yesterday, day before yesterday, we made some uh, reverse twist bars out of one inch stock. Uh, yesterday we made uh, we made four basket twists from uh, half inch square stock. <clears throat> today we're going to make six diamond fauceted uh, balls. Okay, they're not really going to be round, they're going to have diamonds. Uh, they're going to have faucets on them like a diamond. Not diamond. Facets, faucets, you know, on the, on the hip, what can I say? But anyway, and the way we do this is we take, normally, I take this piece an inch and a half, which is quite heavy, and I put it underneath the power hammer. I put a spacer an inch and a half out from the edge of the die. And I put that under the power hammer and I start following it with the power hammer and it leaves me a, uh, a cube inch and a half by inch and a half and it also tapers down uh, and it works real good for the for finials on the ends of things. Uh, but like I said, I got to make a, a six or probably maybe eight of them, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm about wore out. So I think I'm going to do is force that underneath the power hammer, you know, making these. So I got to thinking about it, and I thought, you know, if I cut those into inch and a half cubes and weld a handle onto it, then I can I can forge them. But I don't have to take the time to fold them down, and then I'll just cut the handle off and weld them onto the to the piece that we're making. Well, that sounded all well and good, but uh, I'll be honest with you, my my horizontal bandsaw shot, and I've been looking for another one, but it just ain't been in the budget so far. Uh, so when I tried to cut one by hand uh, with my little bandsaw, my my porter band. Uh, it didn't work out too good, and I got to thinking about it, and I needed to run to town anyway. So I called my uncle job shop, where I get my steel out, and asked him how much he charged me to, to cut eight of these. And he told me he charged me ten bucks. Well, I can't cut them for ten bucks by the time I mess around and, and cut them out. And I was going to town anyway, so I dropped them off on the way to town, and I picked them up on my way back, and now I've got eight real nice square cubes. Sometimes you just have to admit that somebody else can do things better than you can do and quicker than you can do it and cheaper than you can do it. And that's what I did. So now I got eight of these little cubes. So there they are. So what we're going to do now is I'm, I'm not going to video me welding the handles on you. You've seen that way too many times. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these ready to, uh, to forge. And then we'll come back when we get when we get started forging, okay? So let's get to it. So here's all eight of our cubes with the handles welded on. Uh, I went ahead, I just happened so happened I had to uh, cut some shelving up the other day, uh, modified it. So I had, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these short pieces, a half inch. Uh, so I went ahead and I welded the handle on each one. Uh, that will go quicker for me. So we're ready to go over to the power hammer and uh, I'll show you how we're going to do this cold first and then we'll heat, heat them up and, and, and we'll start forging. So let's get to it. For this particular job, this particular forging, we're going to use the KA75. Uh, I really like this little hammer. Uh, it's great for tooling, and it's great for one shot, uh, one hit jobs, and uh, that's what this basically is. Uh, and you get a, you can control the hits real good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our cube once we've heated it up, and we're going to put it on the die, and we're going to put it on the diamond at a 45 degree angle, just like that. Then we're going to come down and we're going to hit it once or twice. Creating a flat spot on the top and the bottom. 
Then we're going to take it. We're going to roll it 180 degrees. And we're going to do that again. Flat spot top and bottom. You have to go 180 degrees. If you just go 90, 90, 90, you're going to end up with it lopsided. So you one or two hits uh, with it up on the diamond, 180 degrees. Two more hits. You take a look at it. Take it 90. Get it where you want it. Two more hits. One or two. I'm, I'm saying probably going to be two. And then turn it another 180 and get the other side. And it should only take one heat, but we'll see. So that's how we're going to do it. So as we showed you, we're going to come up here. We're going to go at a 45, maybe a little more. We're going to come down. We're going to go to four. And we're going to turn it 180 degrees. Now we're going to turn it 90. This is what we have so far. Now if you'll notice, the diamond points aren't touching, they're still kind of flat. So we're going to put it back in, we're going to heat it up one more time, and we're going to do it one more time all the way around. So we're bringing it back out, set it at 45 right at the edge. 180 degrees right at the edge, 45, 90, that's right at the edge, 45, 180, right at the edge, 45, so now if you look at it, you'll see that all the Edges are points now, or close to points. They're a lot better than they were. So that's how we get our diamond shape. Now you can do that with a striker. You can do it with a you can do it with a hand hammer. Uh, I've got the power hammer, so I do it with a power hammer. But you can you can do it with a hand hammer, or you can do it with strikers. Uh, whatever you have available to you. Uh, they make a nice finial, they really do. Uh, so there it is. So there's our diamond fossil ball made from inch and a half hot rolled square stock. Made a total of eight of them. There's the other seven with the handle still on them. Like I said, they make a nice finial. Uh, they're a nice piece. Uh, these are a little easier than the ones I've done in the past because like I said, I had the material cubed before I started. Usually I take the full bar and I fuller an uh, inch and a half section down from the full bar. But this time I went ahead and cubed them and welded handles on them. Much easier process to do it that way. Well, that's today's video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, these aren't too difficult to make, especially if you got a power hammer. If you don't have a power hammer, like I said, you can make them with a hand hammer or with strikers. Uh, I just, like I said, I'm in this make a living and I'm using power hammers. So, anyway, like I said, this one's, I've cut it off, cut it loose from the handle that we used to forge it. Uh, like I said, they make good finials. Uh, they make decorative pieces. Uh, smaller ones made from three quarter inch stock. I take and I drill them and then I tap them and I uh, screw a stud in there and I use them uh, for decorative bolts and things. Okay? Or I can cut uh, the head off of a lag bolt 
and I can put the lag bolt in there and run a bead around it and it makes decorative lag bolts also. So there's a lot of things you can use this for. So like I said, uh, this is a, uh, these are, an L, are elements for a piece that I'm, I'm uh, working on and uh, hopefully we'll have it done here in the next couple days and we'll show you how all the pieces, all the elements that we forged the last three days go together to make one big piece. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, if you liked it, uh, like it and share it with your friends. Uh, that's what makes that's why I keep making these videos. So uh, y'all take care and we'll see you the next time in uh, Suburban Jessup. Until then, stay safe and bye.